The public deserves to know about what's going on, scandals, things that are being hidden. I think is petrifying about this case. <laughs> Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. Today is an unplanned video, quite clearly. Christian and I were out for a walk because I love my walks in the morning. They give me so much peace. There were all these police choppers flying above. We approached the gate and there are all these cop cars across the street and this sweet, sweet woman, thank God, stopped me. And she's like, did you hear what's going on? In my head, I'm like, I feel like they're looking for somebody. Not thinking, oh, they're just looking for a criminal. I'll just keep walking through all of it. But she's like, there's a huge mountain lion on the loose and that's what they're looking for. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna turn around. She's like, that's a really good idea. Adam was in the shower getting ready to go to work and I'm like, I'm coming home. There's a mountain lion on the loose. I basically sprinted home. I don't do mountain lions. I don't do that at all. So I told my sisters, I'm like, what are the odds during my walk? This is the one time I will trade sun and palm trees for ice. But then I think about it, there's bears in New Jersey. It's life. But I told Adam, we probably should carry around bear spray or mace or something just for these types of situations. Plus like the jogger that they found down south. I don't know, tangent. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys about a case that came up through my Google alerts, which was crazy. I have Google alerts for prison wives, but this wasn't related to a prison wife. I think because the word wife and the word prison were both in the article, but then something else even more pressing happened that's like mind blowing. So I wanna share that with you guys and we'll go back to the other case another time. If you guys want like true crime-ish stories, cause that's where I feel like all these cases are popping up and they're fascinating to me. So I wanted to share them with you. Let me know if you want more. This case actually happened right here this week in Las Vegas. It's ongoing, it's real time alerts, and it's insane. There was a 911 call. They found a man deceased on the side of what is now found to be his house. When they called, they said there was an unresponsive male who appeared to be deceased, looked like he died from stab wounds terrifying. So the police went to his house very quickly. They determined that it was the investigative reporter who worked for the review journal. His name is Jeff Gearman. It's actually spelled German. As I'm reading articles, I'm like, why are they calling this man the German? It's not. It's Gearman, but spelled like German. Initially, they were like, could be two routes. It could be a string of robberies that had gone wrong. Or two, he's an investigative reporter. So are there any kind of issues or, or like problematic people that he's reporting on or maybe has reported on in the past that could be a suspect, could want him dead? As they're interviewing people, as they're reviewing people's surveillance footage, they find that there was a man walking through the neighborhood and he was very suspicious. He was wearing a sun hat that looks like this. My sister gave me this hat. She brought it here when she came to visit one time and she's like, I'm never gonna wear it again. She wore it at the pool and she's like, you could keep it. And I don't know why I haven't worn it more this summer. I think it's precious, even though you got a bun sitting on top. Anyway, so he's wearing a sun hat like that, gloves, okay? Plastic gloves. Now remember, we are in a heat wave right now. This is the hottest August and September on record. So it's like 115 degrees. Sun hat, black rubber gloves, a long sleeve orange shirt with like reflective stripes, sneakers, and I think like black pants. I can find a picture. I'll put it in here, of course. So he's walking around the neighborhood, very suspicious, walking towards Mr. Gearman's house. He was seen walking, I think it's like Northwest towards the house. Does that matter? I don't know, probably not. So then they say what happened during this altercation, the suspect or whoever this was that committed this homicide walked up to the house and waited on the side of the house. A few minutes later, Mr. Gearman comes out his garage door, so I don't know if they knew his schedule. I don't know if they were following him. I don't know if they were just gonna sit there and squat on the house all day long. There is an altercation that results in stab wounds and he leaves Mr. Gearman bleeding to death, basically. I mean, not basically, he did, allegedly on the side of his house. Also that same day, there were reports of a suspicious vehicle driving through the area. It was a maroon GMC Denali. It stopped a whole bunch of places in this little neighborhood. It was just driving around very, very suspiciously. Later, it was determined that suspect who was wearing the sun hat, props, I'm just gonna use this every time I say sun hat, wearing a sun hat and the orange shirt left in that suspicious maroon vehicle. Eventually, which was very quickly, because this all took place within five days, the arrest was made, but the burglary series was completely ruled out. So then police and investigators moved on to see if there was anybody Mr. Gearman had any issues with through his journaling work. They wanted to know if anybody was upset with him. Very quickly, Robert Tellis, I think I'm saying that right, Tellis, who's a government official, became a person of interest. He was extremely upset about an article Mr. Gearman had written about 
him. In there, it's stated he was allegedly having an inappropriate relationship with one of his staffers. He was pissed. He went to social media. He posted on his blog defamation and how this was untrue. But he claims that this is the reason this article was published in May and Mr. Gearman wrote it. He claims that this is the reason why he lost the Democratic election in June. He went as far as to post this long rant on his website. He hired an attorney. He was trying to take legal action against, I don't know if it was the Review Journal itself or Mr. Gearman himself, but he was pissed. This is editing row. I totally forgot to add here that allegedly Mr. Gearman was working on another article about TELUS that was going to release soon. So as the investigation proceeds further, and again, this is an investigative reporter. All of his people are investigative reporters. All of his people are pissed. So I don't know if they got on it. I don't know if this was a tip that they received, but there's video footage that the Review Journal got. I don't know if they got it themselves. I don't know if they posted up their people there, but of Mr. Tellis washing a maroon vehicle that matched the identity. The identity, do you identify vehicles like people? The maroon vehicle's description in his driveway. Mr. Tellis washing a vehicle that matched the description of the maroon Denali in his own driveway. Later it was found out that that vehicle was registered to Tellis's wife. Video footage shows that vehicle leaving Mr. Tellis's house around 9 a.m. the morning of the murder and returning a little after 12 noon that day. The police quickly drew up warrants. They searched his house, they searched his vehicles, and they took him in for questioning. They did release him because they had to wait for the DNA results. But what's bizarre to me, I don't know why, I don't know, maybe you guys would know. Maybe you guys can speculate in the comments with me. Mr. Tellis returned home <laughs> wearing what appeared to be a hazmat suit. It looked like a clear plastic hazmat suit. And reporters were right there questioning him. He refused any comment, walked into the garage, just stone-faced, hazmat suit, in the garage, didn't say a word, closed the doors on them very quickly. DNA results come back. They had recovered the wide-brimmed hat from his property. On the inside, there was a black sweatband. He had cut out parts of the hat in a way that allegedly looked like he was trying to get rid of evidence from the crime scene. They also recovered a pair of shoes that matched the shoes that that suspect in the sun hat, is this getting annoying? And the orange shirt was wearing. Those shoes had blood stains on them and they also were cut in a way, like there were parts that were cut out and missing in a way that probably, allegedly, was to destroy evidence. Hmm. Eventually that DNA came back. It was positive. They were able to ID Mr. Tellis at the crime scene. SWAT, fire trucks, police, ambulance went to the house. They went in and recovered Mr. Tellis, bringing him out on a stretcher. And they put him in an ambulance. They can't say what exactly happened, but they can confirm that those were self-inflicted wounds and that's why he came out on a stretcher. So in my opinion, he doesn't wanna to have to deal with a life sentence, death penalty, whatever. I don't know if they have that here in Nevada, I'm not sure. But the whole point is he doesn't wanna to have to deal with life in prison. The result of somebody because you're having an alleged affair instead of either leaving your wife and moving forward with that relationship or ending it. You got to kill somebody because you want to have your cake and eat it too, allegedly. Those were self-inflicted wounds. So my opinion, I'm just saying what I think is that he was trying to kill himself. While they're still uncovering facts, what I think is fascinating about this case is that it only took five days for the media, the reporters, the investigative reporters at the Review Journal, specifically, the police, the DNA specialists, everybody put tips from the public that really helped solve this case and get a suspect arrested. It's ongoing, obviously. This just happened a couple days ago. They're literally reporting on it today. And I think the arrest was last night and the press conference with the detectives was today, but they nailed it, you guys. Nowadays, cases with social media, like Kylie wrote Rodney, I don't know how to say her last name, like that case, it's social media. It's the public, it's people like us that are helping to solve these cases and to solve them quickly. Yeah, we might be armchair detectives, but who cares? We're helping, right? But what I think is petrifying about this case, investigative reporters and whistleblowers have a job and they have a very, very, very important job to do. The public deserves to know about what's going on, scandals, things that are being hidden. Whistleblowers need to happen. Whistleblowing needs to happen. But now, is this gonna present not only a local, but a national issue and concern Concern that the safety and potentially the lives of investigative journalists are at stake, are at risk 
because people are just trying to do their jobs and get the public the information that they're entitled to it's really really scary i don't know what are your thoughts do you guys like this kind of stuff i love this kind of stuff i live for this kind of stuff and i would be more than happy to add these kind of videos i posted a story a couple years ago and you guys loved it you're like you need to do more videos like this but this is while adam was still inside and i was still really heavily doing prison wife tips and stories and visit information and that kind of stuff and then i went to mom stuff so you guys let me know if you've made it to this far in the video we're vibing so you might as well hit the subscribe button give me a like a thumbs up if you like this video it just helps me out so much in youtube i need to stop asking you questions just let's discuss in the comments i live for this stuff i love you guys so very much baby's still sleeping which will give me time to hop in the shower so i'm gonna go do that right now i will see you guys my beautiful friends and family in the next one Mwah.